Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF.com formulator race of the day for Wednesday, October the 25th, race number seven at Belmont Park. Let's take a peek at the field. We're going a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. It is an entry level optional claiming race. And remember, head on over to the race of the day event page on DRF.com, download free formulator past performances and handicap along with us as we take this field in post position order. Matt, the number one bird's eye view, multiple graded stakes placed as a a two-year-old last year finally ran a career best buyer and much faster than what he's used to running last time out he still has work to do I was gonna say that that's the biggest thing that most recent run looks like an anomaly right now everything else is in that low mid high even 70 range you get to break 80 until that most recent start I also don't trust this horse one for 12 lifetime five times second or third I can understand anybody that wants to give this one a shot. The fourth place runner came back to win next out, or run next out, I should say, with an 80 buyer. I don't love this horse. The horse, uh, two starts back, ran at a mile and 5 It's really the only time he's stretched mm -hmm. all the way out in his career. He ran okay at Kentucky Downs. Maybe this distance is what he's been waiting for. I'm sure Javier will put him in a good spot. Let's see, according to Time Form US, where Javier will put the number one bird's eye view, and he has him in mid-pack. I wouldn't be surprised if he's a little bit closer to the pace, maybe where Time Form US has the seven. I was going to say, I think this is going to be an instance where you want to be the one pressing the two, shake and or simply because I don't think this two is all that as far as quality is concerned. No disrespect, but at the same time, this has this horse has one job, and that's to go to the front. Shake and the number two, is making his first start off the claim. He has not raced on turf in almost three years. That was uh, in a mile and three eighths race at Churchill Downs, a race that did feature three next out winners, including a quality turf allowance horse and Golden Soul. Shakenator is going to be on the lead, but you got to think he's a dirt horse at this point in his career, and he's going to have to run the race of his life or walk just set glacial fractions in order to beat this. I was going to say and have nobody do any sort of running from the back of the pack. I wish everybody obviously the best of luck. I just think this one's a pace setter. I think Shamsan's got a good chance in here, the number three for Kieran McLaughlin. This is a son of Bernardini, two star back took on rocketry a, a three-year-old that really wants that mile and three-eighths distance Shamsun tried to make a mid-race bid flattened out I won't hold the most recent start on dirt against him his recent turf races have shown slight improvement on the buyer scale he's only one for nine he's tough to trust he hasn't won from five starts on turf but he fits in this race I picked him second I thought long and hard about picking him on top if I want some of the more experienced horses he would be the one for me for the reason you laid out that run two back I, I'm not sure entirely what the game plan was they made a big mid move going into the far turn the second time and that was really into the teeth of the pace you look at the time form u.s sort of color codings that whole entire fractional area was all color coded red so you moved into the teeth and he understandably flattened out don't hold the dirt race most recently against him um, i think something else to just keep in mind for all of these runners if we stay on the turf you're probably dealing with some give because it sounds like we're getting a ton of rain coming on we're Tuesday. We're expecting rain Monday night into Tuesday, maybe even into Wednesday morning. Hopefully this race stays on the main track and if the uh, and race stays on the turf. And if the four focus group runs on a wet turf course, it will be the first time in his career. And I think Chad Brown's got to be a little bit frustrated by the two recent performances, hence the addition of blinkers. Last time out, he was taken far back down towards the inside. He was still in traffic turning into the stretch. He altered course to split horses about four or five path and he came with an okay late run if the blinkers move this horse up he's lightly raced enough and has shown enough in some of his races to indicate that he's a main contender in here I'm just not sure five to two is the right price I was gonna say I feel like he's going to be an underlay but I understand boy any sort of marginal improvement that makes him arguably the horse to beat in here because he's already knocking on the door I don't want to hold the fact against him that most recently Aquaphobia beat him. He's a nice horse. Memories of Peter, who we'll talk about momentarily. His memories of Peter, we know what he is. Um, I think Focus Group is a major player. Holiday bonus, the number six. Flash trading the five is obviously a major right. factor if this race is washed to the main track. He's an MTO. Holiday bonus and Nibbler for Grand yeah. Motion. Only one for 12 lifetime. Third most recently at Keeneland. Not a bad effort. Two starts back against the sharp Big Bend in the Dueling Grounds Derby. Maybe this distance is what he wants. And he has a little bit of tactical speed. Yeah, as long as they can keep him in the running early, I think Arad's got to get him into a position. I don't trust him as far as I could throw him. I understand he fits from buyers, he fits from time form U.S. ratings. To me, he's just another horse if you use him underneath only. The seven memories of Peter finished ahead of the morning line favorite in this race most recently. I thought he had a slightly better trip. 
finishing second behind Aquaphobia. The sixth place finisher in that race, Wrapped, came back to run third in the state bred Mohawk last week with an 89 buyer speed figure. But you look at this horse's lifetime record. Five seconds from 22 starts, hasn't won a race in over two years. He's the kind of horse that's an underneath only. 100 percent. And I suppose if anyone is going to try to go the opposite way and say, well, this is what he wants to do, this is the time, maybe because both of his wins came at Belmont Park and this is going to be beneficial for him. To me, he's the ultimate underneath key. The number eight, not in charge, got a big pace set up last time yep. out at a mile and a quarter at Belmont, 25 to one, and then he rolled by the competition to win with a career best 86 buyer. That being said, he just found, I think, the right spot for entry-level allowance, where he's facing horses like Memories of Peter, who hasn't won in two years. Horses like Bird's Eye View, one for 12, one for nine. Uh, the horse trying dirt for the uh, turf for the first time in forever. Holiday bonus, one for 12. Maybe this horse is just figuring it out. They, they, well, there's something to be said about finding the right group. And I mean, again, this is a group that we have a lot of horses that like to nibble, not many of them that like to get the job done. Uh, you're 100% right about the pace scenario. Things got really, really quick early on. I'm not entirely sure why. But the thing that kind of just caught me was the fact that not only did he go on by everyone, he just cruised by everyone on the far turn, and he just had enough left in the tank late. There's a part of me that wonders if he's just kind of the horse in a similar way to focus group. They're lightly raced right. enough where, you know what, I kind of want fresh faces. I think that's the thing. You don't want the one for 12s, the one for 13s. Yeah. You want horses that are not proven losers exactly. just yet. Seat of Honor, usually this is your kind of horse. Takes yeah. him a little while to figure the game out, and then he got it done disqualified from the win at Parks two starts back, but then scored on turf at Delaware in his most recent start. Just a little too slow for my liking. And you know what, that's why I didn't give him any more of a look, because he's still, I think, at least seven or eight points too slow. And okay, look, maybe he can run second or third at a big, big number. I just wonder, I'm also curious what kind of ride he's going to get. I wonder if Paco gets aggressive and maybe he's the one that takes up the stalking trip behind the dirt horse. I think a lot of horses are going to be looking for yeah. that spot. Sitting off yep. of the two, getting jump on these closers, then hope they're one for 12, one for Kicks 14. In. Natural inclination yeah. to run second or third to settle does kick in. Let's take a look at the selections for the Wednesday Formulator Race of the Day. You're going with the eight, not in charge. I believe Joe Bravo aboard six to one on the morning line. You're going eight, three, four, and seven. I'm hoping the Blinkers Wakes focus group up a little bit for Chad. For me, though, he's probably too much of an underlay to do anything with. So you go eight, three, four, seven. I'm going four, three, eight, seven. But any kind of multiple race wager, I'm probably going to use the three, four, and eight in equal weight. If you are playing the Wednesday Belmont card from home. When you sign up to DRF bets, you're going to be rewarded immediately. $300 bonus. DRF.com forward slash fall is where you need to go. Please use the promo code fall300. Approximate post time for the Wednesday formulator race of the day, the 7th at Belmont, 413 Eastern. Best of luck.